It's a wonderful book, Little Richard. You know, a lot of, of the great superstars of music still credit you yes. uh, with uh, beginning the whole thing, That's whether true. you're happy about it now or you're not. I'm glad about it. Yeah. I'm glad about it. What are your first memories of the Beatles? They were great fans of yours. Well, when I, <clears throat> Brian Epstein brought me to Liverpool, his dad had some record stores, and so they brought me there to, to do um, an engagement at the ballroom there. And he had these four little boys looking very strange to me. And he says, uh, he said, they just love you. I said to myself, I was saying, I hope they don't, you know? Yeah. Uh, 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 he says, he says, he says they, they just crazy. And Paul just took my hand and he just pulled my fingers. And, and uh, John wasn't pulling as much as Paul. Yeah, yeah. Paul really pulled. Yeah. And George was pulling, Rango was pulling. And they had just got rid of this guy best from, from them at the time. And they was asking me how did it look in America. And they were singing all of my songs. And Paul used to like when I said, woo he loved that. But you can still do that. Oh, huh? yes, I haven't lost anything. Oh, that's good. Just <laughs> add on to it. Just add it on. And they just loved me. And you know, so I went to Hamburg, Germany with them, and they was making $50 per person. Mm. And it was me, uh, the Swingin' Blue Jeans, Casilla Black, Mick, the Rolling Stones, uh, uh, they didn't have nowhere to stay, and they were staying sleeping on the, on the floor, you know, uh, at the time. And, uh, you know, Jimi Hendrix was my guitar player. Right. He was right. 18 years old. Billy Preston was my organist. Oh. And uh, he, he was 14. James Brown was our vocalist. No. And uh, so, you see, he and I was raised together. He used to like to beat me because I, I looked better than he did. <laughs> and, and, uh, um, and everybody was talking about how beautiful I was. Yeah. And he wanted to beat me to mess it up. <laughs> So the Beatles were around a lot. A at lot, that time. yes. Yeah. And I had to pay for their food, Merv. You know, uh, if you all are listening, send my money back, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the well, Beatles. Paul's got, a, uh, he's Paul, got plenty he, of money. He has enough to send. Paul, Linda, hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, but But what happened was, Paul was so nice, you know. Uh, John used to like to mess with me in my dressing room, you know, quite a bit. He, I can't say on television what he did, you know. Uh, 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 uh. He, he was something else. Hmm. In fact, I never met nobody like him. Really? Uh, uh, I don't think nobody met nobody like him. No. <laughs> but I mean, I don't mean he was bad. Now, listen, I, I'm not saying nothing bad about him. God bless his soul. Uh, uh, but he was all right, but he would mess with me. Hmm. Uh, 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 uh. He, he wouldn't let me out of my dressing room. Oh, He my. would hold me in my, he would hold the door. And I would be screaming. My. And, and loud. Loud, I'm sure. And, wow. and sometime I would have screamed like a white lady, Woo! <laughs> Did you ever think that? And, and you know, black ladies say, Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> and white ladies go, Woo! <laughs> Excuse me for cutting you off. No, that's all right. <laughs> But uh, did you ever think they, the Beatles would get so big? No, Brian Epstein offered me a tape to bring back of the Beatles. They was singing Good Golly Miss Molly and Long Tall Sally. They were singing Rip It Up and Ready Teddy. And you know, all, I would go over there and they would always call me king. You know, when I get over there, the Beatles said, you know, you're the king. Uh, uh, Mick Jagger, they said, you're the king. All, everybody, and they would put their coats down for me to walk on when it'd be raining. They would take off their coats and, and said, you can't get, we can't afford for you to get wet. Said that uh, 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 you're history, you, you, you're, you're, you're really, you're the creator. And, and I didn't feel that way, you know, although I knew that what they were saying was the truth. You know, <laughs> And so it just really shook my mind, you know, and all these years, and then when I look back and see David Bowie, you know, which admits that he took, got his style, and I was his inspiration boy, yeah. George, Michael Jackson yeah. says I'm his idol, uh, Prince, and I'm, you know, I'm just, I thank God that I'm a legend, living legend and not a dead one. A dead one, yeah. You know, most of them are gone. I know, I know, you know and you're still here. Looking good. I know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there he was, and here he is, uh, <laughs> at home. Get up and applaud, Mr. Little Richard. Let me tell you about Elvis Presley called him the greatest. Smokey Robinson said he was the beginning of rock and roll. Mick Jagger admitted half of what I know I learned from watching his stage act. John Lennon says he was better than Elvis. Paul McCartney said he was my idol. 
Keith Richards acknowledged that he was the most, the most exciting moment of my life was appearing on stage with Little Richard. Dick Clark simply called him the greatest rock and roll legend of our time. And here he sits. Thank nice you. Nice to have you Thank with you. us. Thank you. I'll, I'll, let's move on from, uh, we're talking about the foundation to the many people you've influenced. Can you recall some of your early meetings with the Beatles? Oh, yes. And what they said to you, what Ooh, you said to them, yes, where you were, and, yes. and what it was like making early music with the Beatles. I can see it right now, almost like a vision. When I first went to Liverpool, Brian Epstein's daddy owned it, um, a lot of record stores, and he brought me to the ballroom there. And he, when I walked in, he said, Richard, I got four guys. Would you mind taking a picture with my group? He said, one day I hope they record and they become famous. He, said, I, he says, I'll give you a percentage to take this tape back to the States, which I didn't even take it. Uh -huh. I didn't believe it was going to make it. I must tell you the truth. Well, now, okay. So you sat in the club and you saw their set. Did yeah. you see their set? Uh, no, I heard it from the, I was behind the stage. Oh, I so was in the dressing room. What we, now they're talking about, that may have even been before Ringo was part of the group. No, Ringo had just he came was, with them. with the group, okay. Mm -hmm. What do you remember thinking about what they were doing there? Well, they were singing, love, love me do, you know, I yeah. love you, so please, 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 love me do. They would have sung Good Golly Miss Molly, but I was on the show, they couldn't sing it. Right. Uh, um, uh, they sound good. Paul was unbelievable. Uh, uh, to me, I felt that he could make it uh -huh. himself. I felt that the Rolling Stones could make it all the way because they were so rocker, yeah. really rockers type of group. But uh, after I went on the stage and they, they were so excited, they just wanted to touch me. I took them with me to Hamburg, Germany, to the Star Club, where they went on right before they me. They had well. my name out uh, in the streets, and the Beatles had a little name in Hamburg where they had been going there working yeah, in the Star a Club. club there. Where they was bringing all the groups out of England there, yeah. you know, to perform, and, and so. Uh, we went there, and we were sitting in the dressing room between shows, me and Paul, John, and they were listening to me, and they liked it that, woo They wanted that so bad, you know, and Paul could do it, you know, and, 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 and he would just get, you know, uh, uh, at, he couldn't do it as good he could do it, but not the way he wanted to be. What, what did they then do from that point, in your view as a musician, mm -hmm. that in addition to the shrewd management that helped launch them, how did, how did they grow musically? I, I think that they grew very rapidly because what they did was, uh, I, I think the Beatles themselves were surprised with the phen phenomenal success that happened to them. I'm sure they were shocked because what, they went back and got the old music. They went back and got me, Chuck Berry, Chuck Berry yeah. uh, 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 Bo Diddley. Uh, they went back and picked us up, you know, and Mick Jagger went back and got the uh, uh, Muddy Waters and, and Elmo James and Highland Wolf. And, and they just, what they did, they brought it back to the public. Uh, instead of coming out of America, they brought it from Europe it. and threw it back across the water. So now, here it is, it's good. And then they had the ability to write good stuff themselves. Oh, they're obviously. fantastic. Some of the, greatest, take a break. the greatest writers. Unbelievable. We'll take a break. Our phone number, 570 119, and lots more. With and I love Richard. you. Yeah. <laughs>